ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami yung kasama sa bawat tag Pag-aabay natin, laging lutasin To ask? Like what? I mean, if an emergency happens, will you able to recognize it? Or will you know how to respond? Do not worry, Nan. I heard that Mom Zai will show us the proper way of conducting first aid in case of an emergency. Buckle up, guys, because we are about to start our journey on safety education. Shall we? Let's G! <laughs> Hi there! How are you guys doing? I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am Mom Zai and you are watching Fernandino Teens TV. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to assess emergency situations, demonstrate the proper procedure in conducting basic life support, the primary and secondary survey of the victims, Show the different types of dressing and bandaging and demonstrate appropriate bandaging techniques for unintentional injuries. This lesson will give you a wide range of information about common unintentional injuries that may happen at home, school, work, and even in recreational areas. To prevent or reduce the risk of the serious injuries, it is necessary that you learn the concepts and principles of safety education. Practice the habits of observing appropriate personal safety measures and possess adequate knowledges and skills in performing appropriate first aid procedures. Today, we are going to discuss the fundamental concepts of first aid and to put emphasis to its importance, especially in saving people's lives. At the end of our learning adventure, 
you will be given chance to reveal what is inside our mystery picture. Let us get started with this amazing journey of learning. Activity 1. Emergency, emergency. What will I do? Let us gauge your prior knowledge about first aid. You will be given a common emergency situation in which you are going to identify first aid procedures that should be applied. You will be given 10 seconds to type your answers in the comment box below. 1. Your friend falls down the stairs and he can hardly stand. What will he do? Two, your mother accidentally touches a hat pack. What will he do? Three, your baby cousin accidentally swallows a small part of a toy car and it gets stuck in his throat. What will he do? Do you think you did the right action for its emergency situation? Do not worry. As we go on, you will discover the proper ways of addressing those situations appropriately. Activity 2. Organize your thoughts. For our next activity, your task is to associate and to organize your thoughts that are related with first aid. What comes first to your mind when you hear the term first aid? First aid is an immediate and a temporary care given to a person who suddenly gets ill or injured. It includes self-help and home care if medical assistance is not available or delayed. It can mean the difference between life and death in extreme cases. Aside from possessing adequate knowledges and skills in applying first aid, it is imperative that we are also aware of our limits as first aiders. Objectives of first aid First, to save lives. Second, to prolong life. Third, to alleviate suffering. Fourth, to prevent further injury. What do you think are the characteristics of a good first aider? 1. Gentle A good first aider does not cause pain and panic. 2. Observant A good first aider notices all signs of injuries. 3. Resourceful a good first aider makes the best use of things at hand. 4. Tactful A good first aider does not frighten the victim. 5. Sympathetic A good first aider comforts and reassures the victim. Activity 3. Is he a good first aider? Who among the students are good first aiders? Analyze the emergency situations and click thumbs up if you agree with what they did. If you disagree, click thumbs down. Mike is very relaxed in controlling the bleeding on her classmate's finger. Very good! The correct response is a thumbs up. Mike was gentle in applying first aid. One is insisting that his unconscious sister should drink water. Fantastic! The correct response is a thumbs down. The victim may suffer from choking by doing so. This is similar with the emergency situation earlier. Again, it is inappropriate to give liquid to an unconscious victim. Mark makes use of his clean handkerchief to tie his best friend's bleeding arm. Amazing! The correct response is a thumbs up. 
Mark is a resourceful first aider. James speaks comforting words to his cousin who sprained his ankle while playing basketball. Great! The correct response is a thumbs up. James is a sympathetic first aider. What are the do's and don'ts in giving first aid? Let us listen to the opinion of Paolo Nilo, a registered nurse from Quezon Memorial Medical Center. Hi, this is Paolo Nilo, nurse from QMMC. Do's and don'ts in giving first aid. Check if the area is safe. Have a presence of mind. Secure your safety first. Don'ts. Do not panic. Do not use toothpaste on open wounds. Don't immediately transfer the victim. Check for neck fracture first. Let's have the recap. We learned that first aid is an immediate and temporary care given to a person who suddenly gets ill or injured. It includes self-help and home care if medical assistance is not available or delayed. The main objectives of first aid are to save lives, prolong life, alleviate suffering, and prevent further injuries. You also learn that the first aider must be gentle, observant, resourceful, tactful, and sympathetic. Great job, Fernandina teens! Let us now unlock door number one. You are now ready to learn about unintentional injuries. Let us find out more about this topic when Fernandina Teens TV returns. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon yung bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo yung National Heritage Month, nating na temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, Metong ka rin aktibidades na ng syudad at yung launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ng Heritage Passport at yung metong ka rin proyekto ng kaya katamong syudad yung paman na muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong no ka rin makalagelangan ding eganagan ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo yung kaya katamong heritage district. Ah, kaya daw din kaya ni, ding importansya daw ding mapay na tradisyon, kaya ni syudad, kalupa yung pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May aho siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong nuka rin puntalan mo na ding at syukin passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office, at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ega na ganang nga puntalan mong lugar. At di mong may nga rin ang tutong passport. Balumin nga ni, panahon na ini, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa nga ini, agkatan ko la ding bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50, imbis na lumaot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamong heritage structures, kaya ni syudad. Anya naman ka rin mumun ang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamong heritage passport, may dinan lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Gawan nyo mo bakit na makapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabila ng kaya kayong heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyak yan, nanano ko pa, tara na! TV. You are still watching Fernandino Teens TV. Welcome to your second safety education adventure. 
This will be a very exciting learning adventure because you will know the proper procedures in assessing emergency situations for unintentional injuries by conducting the primary and secondary survey of the victim's condition. It is expected that at the end of this lesson, you can confidently and properly demonstrate the said procedures. Apply the principles of first aid and display the characteristics of a good first aider. 1. What is CPR? 2. When will be the time to give CPR to the victim? 3. Can anybody perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR to the victim? Let us once again hear the opinion of Nurse Paolo Nilo. What is CPR? CPR is giving air and helping the heart to beat again. When will be the time to give CPR? When someone is not breathing and has no pulse. Can anyone perform CPR? No, you should have proper training first to prevent further damage or harm to the victim. Now that we are informed about what CPR is, let us have the two kinds of survey be conducted before attending to any emergency situations. Primary survey of the victim's condition is conducted when the victim is unconscious. The purpose of the survey is to assess and to immediately treat the life-threatening condition of the victim. Now, let us watch a video demonstration of CPR. To perform CPR in adult, first check the danger. Are you or the casualty in any immediate danger? If yes, remove the danger. If that's not possible, move the casualty. Now get a response by kneeling next to the person and squeezing their shoulders. Hold the hands and ask them to squeeze if they can hear you. If there is no response, send for help. Call for an ambulance. If another person is available, tell them to do it. Open the airway by checking the person's mouth and removing any obstructions with a finger sweep. Once the mouth is clear, tilt the head back to open the airway. Look, listen, and feel for any breathing. If they're breathing, gently roll them into the recovery position. But if you can't detect normal breathing, then start CPR, 30 compressions of the chest, followed by two rescue breaths. Here's how. Place the heel of one hand over the lower stern over your other hand on top. Push the chest down by 4 to 5 centimeters. Now do the 30 compressions in time with the beat indicator on your screen. For two rescue breaths. Till the head back, lift the chin, plug the nose, and breathe out. Look for the rise and fall of the chest. Continue CPR 30 compressions to two breaths until the person's response or normal breathing returns. As you continue to provide two breaths, Make sure the head is tilted back and the chest rises and falls each time. If the chest doesn't rise, it may mean that the head is not tilted back enough or the airway is blocked. If the person is still unresponsive and not breathing normally, apply a defibrillator if one is available. Continue doing CPR until medical assistance arrives. On the other hand, Secondary survey is conducted when the victim is conscious or has been revived. It aims to detect everything about the patient's condition. First, chest. Check for cuts, bruises, and other impairments. If the victim feels pain while you apply pressure onto his or her chest, there could be a rib fracture. Second, abdomen. Does the victim's abdomen hurt? Where is the pain coming from? 
his, his or her abdomen tender? Did you feel any lumps? These are the common conditions that you need to consider to get immediate medical assistance. Third, back. Is there movement in the victim's lower extremities? Is there a sensation in these parts? If the answer is yes, do not move the victim. Before you perform primary and secondary survey, you must know the basic assessments in aiding a victim. Checking for vital signs. Vital signs are measurements of the body's most basic functions. The four main vital signs, routinely monitored by medical professionals and healthcare providers, include the following. Body temperature, pulse rate, respiration rate or the rate of breathing. Body temperature. Body temperature is a measure of how well your body can make and get rid of heat. The body is very good at keeping its temperature within its safe range, even when the temperatures outside the body change a lot. The normal human body temperature range is typically from 36.5 to 37 degrees Celsius. Activity 4. What am I? Fill in the missing letters to identify the given picture. This activity will give you insights on different types of medical thermometers. 1. It provides accurate readings in about a minute or less using heat sensors that determines body temperature. 2. Digital thermometer 2. It measures the temperature inside the ear canal through infrared ray technology. Awesome! Tympanic thermometer. 3. It uses infrared sensors to measure the temperature of the superficial temporal artery, which is a branch of carotid artery. You got it right! It's forehead thermometer. 4. It is the easiest way to record approximate temperature of a child ages 1 to 3. Definitely, it's pacifier thermometer. Fun facts, your nose gets warmer when you lie. Spanish scientists from the University of Granada in Spain confirmed that the area around your nose and eyes heats up when you lie. This response can be recorded using a thermal scanner. Pulse rate. The pulse rate is a measurement of the heart rate or the number of times the heart beats per minute. As the heart pushes blood through the arteries, the arteries expand and contract with the flow of the blood. Taking a pulse not only measures the heart rate, but can also indicate the following. Heart rhythm, strength of the pulse. The pulse rate may be taken in different points in a body, like Radial, brachial, carotid, femoral, popliteal, pedal. How to check your pulse? Using the first and second fingertips, press firmly but gently on the arteries until you feel a pulse. Begin counting the pulse when the clock second hand is on 12. Remember, do not use your thumb because it has its own pulse that you may feel. Activity 5. Check your pulse. Spot your radial pulse. Gently place two fingers of your other hand on this artery. Count the beats for 15 seconds. Now multiply.
multiply the result by 4 to get the number of beats per minute. Well done! Fun facts! According to Paris Regional Medical Center, your heart rate drops when you sleep. As you sleep, it is common for heart rates to drop below 60 beats per minute. Your metabolism slows, which in turn slows your heart and helps your body relax. Respiration rate or the rate of breathing. The respiration rate is the number of breaths of a person takes per minute. The rate is usually measured when a person is at rest and simply involves counting the number of breaths per one minute by counting how many times the chest rises. Remember, when checking respiration, it is important to also note whether a person has any difficulty breathing. Fun facts! Oxygen only plays a small part in breathing. The air we breathe contains 21% oxygen, but our bodies only use 5%, the rest is exhaled. Be ready for an activity after a short break. Magtanim ay di biro, pero para sa retired teacher na si Mang Tomas Gamboa, isa itong pangarap na matagal na niyang inaasam na anihin. Kaya naman sa 500 square meter lot na ito sa Florida Blanca, Pampanga, unti-unti niyang tinamnan at pinalago ang naipong kita sa mahigit 20 taon niyang pagtuturo. Kaya, tara na pasukin ang paraiso ng ating bidang guro. Welcome to Mate Garden Park, Tara! Mula sa makukulay na disenyo hanggang sa iba't ibang klase ng planting methods, makikita yan sa personal gulayan na tinawag nilang Modern Agriculture Farm Edition. Talaga namang binuhos ni Mang Tomas ang kanyang expertise sa pagtatanim at syempre, hindi mawawala ang pagiging resourceful ng ating resident planter. Yung paggamit ng mga material sa pagtatanim, iba-iba. May plastic, may gulong, may sako, may borde, lahat ng klase ng borde na pwedeng gamitan, ginamit ko na. Experimental ang approach ni Mang Tomas, pero pagdating sa soil mixing, organic ang swak na soil mixture na approved sa ating green thumb. Pinagahalo lang ang saw soil, top soil, ipa, at carabal manure para sa optimum growth ng mga healthy veggies. Halos lahat pa ng mga gulay sa kantang bahay kubo, present din dito sa kanyang lupain. Kaya naman ang buong pamilya ni Mang Tomas, hanggang sa mga apo niya, enjoy sa pag-harvest at pag-aalaga ng Mafe Garden Farm na ipinangalan niya pa sa kanyang mga anak. Na kayo, siyempre, di ba, mahilig kayo magluto. Oh. Ano pong naging ambag nito? Uh, nung, mula nung tinay ito, natuto kami lagi mamasyal dito, lagi nagluluto, dala-dala lang yung mga pagkain. Dito kami nagpipiknik. At itong mape na sinasabi, ito'y pag-aarit ang dalawa kong anak. Binibigay ko sa kanila. Legado. Ako ang magiging caretaker nila. Yung mape. Ang kalinga ng isang ama, ramdam hindi lang sa pamilya, kundi sa mga paninim niya. Kaya naman ngayong pandemya, make yourself busy, bawasan ang stress, at mas maging productive sa tulong ng pagtatanim para may dagdaghain na rin. Kaya para sa mga plantitos at plantitas na gustong i-level up ang planting skills, Papayo ko sa mga sa kong natarit, lalo sa mga teachers na hindi medyo ng agriculture, Pwede kayong kumuha ng background sa Facebook. Pangalawa, kung konti lang yung pera nyo na ipon, pwede kayong kumuha ng 200 to 300 square meter at pakonti-konti, pwede kayong magtanim na kinakailangan ng pang-araw-araw na gamitan sa kusina at makakalibang pa sa pangkalili mo. Para sa Balita Pampanga, Gerald Gloton.
einen Dino Zint TV. Hi, thank you for staying tuned in on Fernandino Teens TV. Let me see how retentive your memories are. Do you still recall the primary and secondary survey before conducting CPR? Try this activity, assemble. Let us recall the procedure in conducting primary and secondary survey by identifying the appropriate step for the following emergency situations. 1. Check for response Awesome! The answer is step number 2. 2. Check for breathing Stupendous! The answer is step number 5. 3. Check for dangers You are right! It is step number 1. 4. Conduct secondary survey. Way to go! The answer is step number 9. 5. Give two rescue breaths. Repeat cycle. You got it! It is step number 7. 6. Open airway. What a genius! The answer is step number 4. 7. Commence CPR. Far out! The answer is step number 6. 8. If there is no response, send for help. Terrific! It is step number 3. Great job, Fernandina T. Let us now unlock door number 2. I am very sure that you are now ready to demonstrate the procedures in assessing emergency situations by conducting primary and secondary survey of the victim's condition. Meanwhile, let us answer the next activity. Examine the pictures. 1. Have you seen or used any of them? When? 2. What do you call them? 3. When do you use them? Welcome to your third safety adventure. This will be another and new exciting trip where you will learn in different dressings and bandages used on wounds and that at the end of this lesson, you can explain and properly demonstrate bandaging techniques for some unintentional injuries. The terms dressing and bandage are often used interchangeably. Let's find a difference between a dressing and a bandage. Dressings are used to cover wounds, prevent contamination, and control bleeding. There are two types of dressing. Adhesive dressings are used mainly for small wounds. They come in many different sizes, including specific ties for placement of fingertips. Gauze dressings are thick. Cotton pads are used to cover larger wounds. They are held in place with tape or by wrapping with a gauze strip. Remember, dressings must be sterile and absorbent to prevent the growth of bacteria and should be left in place until the wound heals unless it is need to be regularly cleaned. A bandage, on the other hand, is a piece of material used either to cover wounds, to keep dressings in place, to apply pressure or control bleeding, support a medical device such as splint, or its own to provide support to the body. The three major types of bandages are rolled bandages, tubular bandages, and triangular bandages. Roller bandages are long strips of material. Basically, there are two types of roller bandages. An elastic roller bandage is used to apply support to a strain or a sprain and is wrapped around the joint or limb many times. 
it should be applied firmly but not tightly enough to reduce circulation. Cotton or linen roll bandages are used to cover gauze dressings. They come in many different widths and are held in place with tapes, clips, or pins. Tubular bandages are used on fingers and toes because those areas are difficult to bandage with gauze. They can also be used to keep dressings in place on parts of the body with loss of movement, such as elbow or knee. Triangular bandages are made of cotton or disposable paper. They are used for applying pressure to wound to control bleeding. Triangular bandage have two faces, open and cravat face. Remember, always use a square nut. Keep the cloth sterile to avoid infection. Always keep the ends. How to do square knot? Right over left. Then do left over right. Pull the side of the face and remove the knot. Did you have fun doing square knot? Great! Let us have an activity. Me or me. Prepare your triangular bandage or use available or local resources at your home. 1. Head Injury Fold the base at least 2 to 3 inches. Place folded face align with eyebrows. Pull back and cross over at the back, tucking apex feet. Do square knot. and effect sneakily. Two, ear injury. Use the white cravat. Start with the apex covering the cheek or the ear. Carry one end over the top of the head. Cross. Bring the short end back around the forehead and the long end around the back of the head. Do square knot. Three, chest injury. Locate the apex, place on the shoulder above the affected chest. Fold the base at least two to four inches. Now tie the base. and the longer side of the face. Before you apply first aid, you must know first the difference between a wound and an injury. An injury is damage to your body. It is a general term that refers to harm caused by accidents, falls, hits, weapons, and more. Wounds are injuries that include break in the skin or other body tissues. Examples of this are cuts, scrapes, scratches, 
and punctured skin. Remember, wear gloves and remove or cut clothing as necessary to expose wound. Control bleeding by applying direct pressure. Cover the wound with sterile dressing and bandage. You did a great job on our third safety adventure. Let us now unlock door number 3. More about our topic when Fernandina Teens TV returns. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ng ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back to Fernandino Teens TV It is expected that at the end of this lesson, you will realize the importance of acquiring necessary knowledge and skills in applying a basic of first aid procedures Activity, Fact or Blah Determine if the following statement is a fact or a blow. Write your response in the comment section below. 1. Unintentional injuries cannot be avoided. It happens at any time, at any place to anybody. Is it a fact or a blow? Magnificent, it is a fact. Number 2. Skipping first aid procedure is alright for as long as nobody notices it. Is it a fact or a bluff? You are really working hard today. It is a bluff. Number 3. When injuries happen, appropriate knowledge and skills of the proper application in first aid could greatly help in saving lives. Is it a fact or a bluff? Excellent! It is a fact. You did a great job on our last safety adventure. Let us now unlock door number 4. Wow! It is an old confirmation. Now raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do you promise to perform my duty? As first aider in any place at any cost. That in times of emergency, I will perform my job as vocation with the utmost dedication and compassion towards the victim. I promise to apply all my skills in first aid to the best of my knowledge and understanding. So, Bless me, God. You are now a first aider. Now, 
It's your turn to apply what you have learned today and save lives. Let us see if we met our objectives. Number 1. Assess emergency situations. We learn about the primary and secondary survey. Number 2. Demonstrate the proper procedure in conducting basic life support. Step 1. Check for dangers. Step 2. Check for response. Step 3. If there is no response, send for help. Step 4. Open airway. Step 5. Check for breathing. Step 6. Commence CPR. Step 7. Give two rescue breaths. Repeat cycle. Step 8. If the victim is still unconscious, continue performing CPR while waiting for the rescue team. Step 9. Conduct secondary survey. Number 3. Show the different types of dressing and bandaging. Two types of dressing. Adhesive dressings. Gauze dressings. Three types of bandage. Roller bandages. Tubular bandages. Triangular bandages. Number 4. Demonstrate appropriate bandaging techniques for unintentional injuries. 1. Head injury 2. Ear injury 3. Chest injury Why is it important to be equipped with the fundamental knowledges and skills in applying first aid? What is the ultimate goal in giving first aid? Let us listen to the opinion of Kisa Gonzalez, a registered nurse who is currently assigned at Pampanga High School. I'm Kisa Gonzalez, a registered nurse. So why is it important to understand and follow the basics of first aid? Since first aid is literally the first assistance we can give to the injured person, understanding the basics of first aid will help us to stay calm and in control when emergency arises. It is also reassuring and comforting to the injured person. What is the ultimate goal in giving first aid? The ultimate goal in giving first aid is to be able to save lives. Prevention is better than cure. Practicing this principle that advocates safety awareness is essential in achieving quality of life. But our immediate environment possesses danger to everyone. No place is considered safe, not even in the comfort of our homes. At this point, let us hear something about safety awareness from Lourdes Pangilinan, a grade 9 student from PHS. Accidents may happen to anybody at any place at any time. Thus, taking the right safety measure greatly help prevent accidents and injuries. Nevertheless, when accidents happen, it is important to have the knowledge and skills to deal with them. Well said, Lourdes! Having knowledge and skills on safety education and injury prevention could help you, your loved ones, and other people in your community during emergency situations. Keep in mind that accidents and injuries can be a result of a situation, an unsafe action, or an unsafe environment. We can do a lot to prevent injuries by understanding the situation, being cautious or aware with the hazards in your immediate environment. The processes of developing awareness of immediate hazards and dangers, equipping you with the appropriate accident prevention skills to overcome these hazards and keeping everyone alive are components of safety education. Safety education is important because living is more enjoyable when we are safe. Therefore, make safety a vital part of life. These are the references that were used in my presentation.
Always remember that if you want to live happily, you must do things safely. Reduce the risk of accidents. Reduce unnecessary risk taking. Always develop safety consciousness. Once you internalize safety awareness in your system, everything else follows. As the old cliche goes, you don't need to know the whole alphabet of safety. Just remember and follow its ABC. Always be careful. Until then, I am Teacher Zaire Bayani. Stay safe and God bless. So, that's how it is. Learning first aid is very important. You are right, Fer. It is vital that we are equipped with such skills. I am now confident to help anyone when an accident happens. I agree. Did you learn something today, Fernandina Teens? That's great. Thank, Thank you, you Mamzai. Thank you for watching. See you on the next episode of Fernandino Teens. TV. Bye! Bye. Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin, hindi laging nandyan Dapat mong harapin kami iyong kasama Sa bawat akin, magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Sa iyong pagkamu